It is always a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Hi, Megan Mozak here. We have another great show for you today. And the Retirement Education Hour, this is part of the Retirement Education Foundation. And the foundation does a lot to help you get up to speed, get knowledgeable, gain confidence about retirement. One of the things that they sponsor are courses that are held throughout the year. We're going to be telling you about those retirement education courses throughout our show and how you can get registered and gain that confidence that I know so many people want these days, confidence about this next phase of life. Kirk and Paul, it's great to be back with you. We want to talk today about really some building blocks, just some basics on getting started with retirement planning. And it does begin with getting the right advice. I think a lot of people, though, wonder, where do I start when I'm looking to hire a financial advisor? It's a big step, isn't it? It's a huge step. And I was, this show was Paul's idea, and I was really excited to cover it because, so as financial instructors for a nonprofit organization, the Retirement Education Foundation, we're not short of opinions, particularly about our industry. Um, and so we often share those opinions. And, and candidly, for most younger people, we would argue that investing isn't that complicated. There is no, no one has a secret sauce. You can't stock pick your way to success. You can't market time your way to success. The data doesn't support it. It's really quite easy to to drive performance with your investments. And it's you just have to buy index funds and just leave it alone. You don't need to hire an advisor to tell you to buy an index fund. By the way, they probably won't tell you to do that. They'll probably tell you to buy mutual funds that have commissions and loads and fees. But I think, and the reason I share that message is because I we have a very strong opinion as it applies to retirement. When you're within 10 years of retirement, throughout retirement, it's no longer about the investments you choose. That isn't what drives performance. So it's not as simple as just taking an index fund and hoping it performs well, because you're now taking withdrawals out of your investments. You are now taking money out of your accounts to live on to make it throughout retirement. And it gets a little, not a little, a lot more complicated. I could tell you in our private practices, we do have private practices. And when we construct a retirement plan for our clients, it's 50 plus hours. And this is all we do. We have teams of CFPs, CFAs, CPAs, MBAs, uh, PsyDs, Paul, my brother. I mean, we have teams of people that are putting these plans together. And this is what we do for a living. So it's far more complicated in 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 just about every case, I would argue, in retirement, if you have any sort of resources, you need help. You need to find somebody to help you. And this is what we want to cover today, Paul, Yeah, is how do you choose the right advisors in retirement? So I know that Paul and I are going to talk about some of the tips to help you choose an advisor, but it starts with education. It is why we teach our retirement education courses, Paul, because Before you make a decision on hiring somebody to help you in retirement, you have to know what to be looking for. And it takes you seven, eight hours of education for you to understand what you actually should be looking for because our industry isn't talking about it. Right, right. And I I think I think it's a great point. I think the benefits. I mean, listen, people who are listening may never be experts. You know, they may not become their own, you know, become financial advisors. Right. But it's very helpful at least to have some basic knowledge. Because that knowledge allows you to be a better consumer, a smarter consumer, and really then know who to look for. In fact, at the end of our class, right, the end of the class, we spend a whole segment on what we're going to talk about today. So if you're listening and you're driving and you want to write this stuff down, don't write it down. Just come to a class, right? You come to class, you're going to learn this, right? Right. I mean, this is our last, what, 45 minutes of the class. That's right. Half hour to 45 minutes is how do you choose an advisor? What questions to ask? We give you a list of questions. How do you do background checks? How do the advisor get paid? What type of an advisor should you be focused on? And then in the class, we show you one of those plans that takes 50 hours to construct so you know what to look for. So if you'd like to register for one of these seven-hour courses that are taught at all the major universities, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, you said something I think is really important, the importance of differentiating, 
you know, while you're younger and working versus when you're five to 10 years from retirement. And I don't, we did that quickly. I think it's important for people to understand that the stage of life you're in and your relationship with money and what you need from your money when you're working is very, very different than when you're planning on retirement. And that's why, you know, there's a difference between, you know, may not need an advisor when you're younger, you're 30, 40 years old. But man, when you get close to retirement, it's a whole different story. Paul, it's because it's the distribution phase. You are now taking money out of investments. And Paul, you nailed it. It's that relationship with money. Your whole lives, as you have been accumulating your wealth, you have been serving your money, right? It's yeah. You are saving, serving, growing to put your kids through school, to raise your family, to save for retirement. Now you are entering a phase where now that money needs to serve you. So all your investment strategies, in fact, all the investment strategies the financial service industry is still promoting is wrong. That's why we teach the class, because as an industry, the financial service industry is incentivized by scale, being able to replicate something rapidly so that they can build it quickly and make more money, generate more revenue. Nowhere in any type of process where scaling is the priority, will you get good planning? It doesn't exist. Each one of you are individuals requiring an individualized plan, not a cookie cutter one size fits all, Paul. Right, right. So I, I, if I could just restate that, I think at the end of the day, in retirement, there is no way to scale that and you know see a ton of people, right? And spend 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour, an hour with a client and actually do real planning. And the truth is, in our industry, it is all about transactions and scalability. Well, their value proposition is I, I'm i a better investor than the other person. Right, right. I got a secret sauce. And I have a special out, manager. Right. And they're wrong. I mean, right. the data doesn't support it. And we go through all that data in the class. Look, it's like preparing for your careers. You go to school, you train. Like preparing to be an athlete, you prepare and you train. Preparing for retirement requires some training. That's why we teach the seven-hour courses at all the major universities. If you'd like to register for one of these classes, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. We are just getting started. More with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm alongside Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're so glad you've tuned into the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and I want to tell you more about those courses that the Retirement Education Foundation sponsors. And these are courses held throughout the year, conveniently scheduled for you. You can even take advantage of these courses from the comfort of your own home. They're also offered virtually To get registered to find out a lot more, simply go to the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. They do fill up quickly, so find a date and a location that works best for you. You can also call to register 800-240-8980. 81. They're taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, Oakland University. I feel like I'm leaving one out. Is there a new location, Kirk and Paul? Well, there's a learning center in Livonia that we're teaching at, and Michigan State, Troy, we're now teaching at as well. So what you're saying is we've got a lot of locations for our listeners. No matter where you are, you're going to find a spot that can work really well for you. And Just a reminder, this is a deep dive. We're talking about one or two day courses, your choice, $29 for our listeners to attend. And that registration fee, it goes to charity through the foundation. So take advantage. Make sure you register today. Again, that website, retirementplanningedu.org. I love our topic today, Kirk and Paul. We're talking about how do you hire a financial advisor, the person you'll link arms with on this journey to and through retirement. And it might not be as easy as just opening the phone book or, or you know, going to Google and, and typing in financial advisor. You really want to be strategic here. Who exactly are we looking for? Well, I know Paul has, has, has done this a, a number of times. We've gone on Google 
typing in financial planners and advisors, and you say there's over 600,000 advisors <laughs> advisors around the country. 600,000. 600, how, how do you choose? What, that's, a, that's a needle in a haystack, right? How do you choose an advisor when you, when you have 600,000? It's overwhelming. And they all tell you Which that you they do hear? financial planning, and they for all retirement. tell you for retirement. They're all specialists. They're all amazing. They all have commercials. How do you choose? It's not easy. Well, that's the point. That's, that's, that's why we're doing this today. That's right. And it's the point of the, the class. That's, that's right. why that's seven right. hours of education will help you filter what is applicable to your situation so you can identify the correct type of an advisor for you to find. That is the whole purpose of the class, in fact. And so one of the things we'll teach in the class is to be able to understand the two standards that currently regu regulate our industry, right? There's the what we call a suitability standard versus a fiduciary standard. And every advisor who is licensed to manage securities, I should say, because then you have the insurance salesperson who will also call themselves financial advisors, but those that are specific to securities are going to fall under one of those two categories, suitability or fiduciary standard. So, Paul, can you explain what a suitability standard is? And I would tell everyone, you need to listen because 85 to 90% of people in our business of that 600,000 fall under the suitability standard. And I think the listeners are going to be surprised. Yeah, I, I think just to say, it is a lesser standard. The standard basically says, so when an advisor is held by a suitability standard, they have to do just what's good enough right? They don't have to necessarily do what's best for you, but they, they have to do what's good enough, right? And I think most would say what's good enough, you know, you can have 20 clients, you can have 300 clients, and theoretically, you can sell all 300 clients the same investment, and as long as it's good enough, it meets that standard, that suitability standard. Paul, that's how they get away with the proprietary that's funds. Right. That's right. Do you wonder why when you go to these certain firms, that most everyone has something very similar and they have the proprietary funds because they fall under a suitability standard. So it just has to be suitable for the person, not best for the person. That's correct. That's correct. What about fees? Are they required to disclose all fees, Paul? They're not. They're not required to disclose all fees, which is the reason why they can sell you mutual funds, right? right. Because we all know it's pretty common standard right now. We all, it's common knowledge that mutual funds have a lot of hidden costs, right? I know our listeners don't believe that. Well, they, 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 they own Vanguard, so it's now Vanguard's cheap. It's, it's cheap. It's cheap, cheap but right. it, there's still right. the average cost of an actively managed mutual fund. You guys aren't going to believe it. Come to the class. We'll teach you. It's between one and a half and two and a half percent per year. That is the average, depending on what study you want to believe. So if you're bound by a suitability standard, you don't have to do all the research nope. to figure out all the hidden fees. You're not required to do that. You're also actually not required to disclose conflicts of interest either, right? So the bottom line is, is that when you're held to a suitability standard, you just don't necessarily have to do what's the best for the client. You only have to do what's good enough. And we would argue that's a lesser standard. Paul, that's 85 to 90% of the 600,000 advisors that's right. in the country. That's right. Okay. So the other 10 to 15% are held to what's called a fiduciary standard. All right. And that fiduciary standard says that you have to do, you're required by definition to do what's in the best interest of the client. They are also required to disclose all conflicts of interest and any and all fees. So this is a standard. I know we could go back in history. President Obama worked on this. I know they're currently working on this, but there is a tremendous amount of resistance. Pushback. Right. By the financial service industry and insurance industry against this full out fiduciary standard. Meaning the pushback is that not all advisors are held to this standard. Right. Right. In the, in the financial service industry and insurance industry tend to be very wealthy, mm -hmm. have strong lobbyists, uh, have a tremendous amount of influence in Washington. Therefore, they've been able to hold this off. Right. Now, here's can I, can the unfortunate I, thing. One thing, Paul, is currently today, it is not illegal to be fall under both a fiduciary standard and a suitability standard. They could do both. And the reason they often want to do both is so they can collect both fees. The fee is the fiduciary and the commission of the product they sold. So we would argue that's double dipping, and we walk people right. through that in the class. Right. I mean, one of the obvious challenges when you're held to this fiduciary standard is one shoe doesn't fit everybody. You can't sell 
one investment to all your clients because obviously not all your clients are the same. It can't be best for everybody if everybody gets it. So it does require a much more individualized approach when you're held to the standard. And you can't scale that. You know, you, you th- that's, it's hard to scale that. I want to open next segment with the average retiree and why they've created these one size fits all mm-hmm. where the suitability standard seems to work. So this is some of the stuff that we teach in our seven, eight hour courses that we're teaching at all the major universities. If you'd like to register for one of these classes, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 240 8981. And we'll be back right after this. Here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we are glad you're spending part of your day with us today. Hi, I'm Megan Mozak. This is the Retirement Education Hour, and we're tackling a really important topic. We're helping you hire your retirement planner, your financial advisor that's going to help you go from your accumulation working years, those years of saving for retirement, and then help you launch into retirement, which is really an interesting part of life. It's a big transition, but getting the right help is so key. And Kirk and Paul are telling us all about that. In fact, this is really in their wheelhouse. This is what they do with the team at the Retirement Education Foundation. They help you Get your arms around all of these different topics that you need to know about when you're planning a 21st century retirement. I want to tell you about the courses that are taught throughout our community throughout the year. You can get registered for them. Deep dive into retirement planning. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul, the two of you tell me all the time, no two retirements are identical. Everyone's different, right? Just like our thumbprint. Everyone has a different one. So when it comes to choosing the right advisor, how important is it that we're looking for someone who looks at us as an individual, knowing our retirement might be very, very unique? Well, I think we spent a lot of time in the course about this. And we've said choosing the advise the right advisor is the most critical variable in your happiness in retirement and sincerely right because for those of you who haven't retired yet you can't appreciate how much anxiety is associated with retirement and your finances for paul and i and the people who attend our courses you know those tend to be people with resources so our fear is for those people who are attending our courses is less about them outliving their money but them way underspending what they otherwise could be spending if they had a plan custom unique to them and they knew what they were looking for right and so finding that person that type of an advisor is very very challenging paul right yeah, it, very out Look, of the six hundred thousand people out there it really is truly there's not many there's not many and so that's the purpose of the class is to teach you how to find that advisor and then more importantly how to filter all the you know we call sizzle or the financial marketing how are you able to identify the truth in a perception, uh, this haze of perception that isn't reality that our industry promotes? And it's not easy, right? I'll give you the example, Paul, and I, and I want your opinion on this, is, is that many of you will hear radio shows, right? You'll hear experts on TV, you'll read magazines, you'll read books about retirement, and they'll the Susie Ormans, the Dave Ramseys, that Ken Fisher's, they're talking about these one size generalized rules, right? And, and those generalized one size fit all rules can work for the average retiree. But I'm thinking people are going to be surprised when I say what the average retiree looks like. You need to appreciate anytime you hear someone say to you what the general rule is about retirement. They are talking to the person that has only saved $200,000 for retirement. That's it. That's all the average retiree has. In fact, 40% of retirees will receive all of their income from Social Security. That they didn't save. They have nothing. All they have is Social Security. So if you have more resources than the average retiree with $200,000 saved, those general rules don't apply to you. You can't go for the 
one size fits all rule like taking out 4% a year to live on or 5% a year to live on. That's crazy. In our private practices, we design plans to take out 7, 8, 9% a year with no chance of outliving their money. That's what we're teaching in the classes. How do you find the right advisor for your needs given the type of assets you have, whether they pre-tax, post-tax, Roth, whether it's pension, whether you have two Social Securities, you're single, whether there's an age difference between you and your spouse, whether you have 500, 5 million, or 25 million. Those are all very different, unique situations that require specialized people to help you. Yeah. I think what makes it so difficult is that, honestly, if you watch TV or you read your magazines, right, or you listen to the radio, the problem is everybody says the same thing, right? Every advisor says the same thing. So if I'm a consumer listening, it is very difficult to, to sort out. Well, if everybody talks about retirement planning, right, everybody talks about all of the things that have to happen, how do I, you know, it's, it's very difficult to figure out who should I believe, who shouldn't I believe, who do I, how do I know whether this person is really doing what we're talking about? And I think that's what the seven hour class is for, right, Paul? It it is. I think one thing you said earlier that's important to understand is that it really isn't in the average advisor's best interest to do what we're talking about. Because at the end of the day, from a selfish perspective. For sure. Right? Because it's not the most profitable. It's not the most profitable. It's extremely time consuming. It's not transactional, right? Right. It, right. It's it's not scalable. You when it. you put 40, 50, 60 hours in in one individual plan, how many people can you see, right? So the average advisor doesn't really want to do this, which makes it difficult for the people who are listening. Paul, you summarize it so well, and I think, I, I, I don't know that we've ever suggested that way, that you, you all are hearing the same things, and your friends are saying the same things, because their advisors are saying the same things of what you should do, when you should do it. That's the purpose of the seven hours so you know how to filter the BS. The noise. The noise. And how do you identify the right person that can help you take the right strategies? Now, if you're foolish enough to try to do this yourself, that's your choice. I would say, and I'm going to offend people, if you're arrogant enough to think that you can do this, I mean, look, how is it any different than your physical health, your financial health? And how many times have you planned for retirement exactly? Right? Is this the first time maybe you're doing this? Oh, because you've been able to accumulate some wealth and gotten lucky and the market's been hot for or the last 12 or years. You're, or you're, you're an expert. You're a great doctor, a great engineer, a great, you know, you're, you're the best in your industry. doesn't mean you're the best at this. There's, you're not even nearly qualified to do right. this. You can't tell me what percentage of the S&P 500 is health care. And you're going to plan your retirement. Stick around for the next couple of segments. And then if you, after the next couple of segments, if you are familiar with the things we're talking about around taxes, income planning, pension lump sum decisions, then if you think you can do that, go for it, right? But I'm going to tell you, you got to likely have a spouse that has nothing, knows nothing about this and you could die tomorrow. What are they going to do? All right. So invest seven hours of your time, go through a course. At all the major universities, we're streaming it live also if you want to stay home because of COVID. We get it. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul in a moment. Here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. Hi, Megan Mozak. Kirk and Paul, they're with the Retirement Education Foundation. They are financial instructors, and that means they help guide you to and through retirement. This is not a journey to be taken lightly. You need the information, and the Retirement Education Foundation is uniquely suited to help you get that info, really get educated about what you need to do to set yourself up for success on this journey to retirement. I wanna give you some information to help you get started so you can attend the courses that the Retirement Education Foundation sponsors. Write this down, retirementplanningedu.org. That's the website, easy registration. These are courses that are taught throughout the year at local universities in our community. You can even call to get registered. The number is 800 240-8981. And if you're on Facebook, like so many of us are, 
please search for Retirement Education Foundation. Give them a like, and that way you can stay up to date on everything they're doing to help you get positioned for success in retirement. We're talking today about how to hire the right financial advisor for you. And if you're getting close to retirement, finding that partnership, that insight, and really the person who's going to help and partner with you is so key. This is a a very important relationship. And when we talk about making sure, Kirk and Paul, that we have that right person, what a disservice it could be to our lifestyles in retirement, our future if we're not taking into account the tax component, and this is one that gets overlooked all the time, doesn't it? Well, it does. And I think the challenge, Megan and Paul, is that all advisors are going to say they're going to be tax efficient. You know, we're tax planning with your investments to be efficient. That is not tax minimization for income planning. Making sure that you don't have actively managed mutual funds or actively managed accounts in your taxable account is great. It's going to minimize taxes. It's going to minimize the tax consequences of your investing. Great. But when you retire, you're going to take money out of these accounts. And that is what we need to focus on minimizing taxes. Bracket management understanding what percentage of your social security, the taxable portion of your social security, and how that impacts the taxable portions of your required minimum distributions that have to come out of your 401ks, your IRAs, and your pensions. This is where you're going to minimize taxes. Look, when we construct a plan in our practice, we spend 40, 50, 60 hours to construct a plan. And a significant portion of it is with our CPA that we employ in our office to map out 30 years of income planning to minimize taxes. It is so complicated. There's no software that does this. It literally takes hundreds and hundreds of iterations trying to find the greatest and most efficient sequence to minimize these taxes. Paul, the reason why taxes are so important is because The difference between how much you pull out of your accounts to give you the net how much you need to spend, that difference can be very significant. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of savings if you do it properly. And that's what's going to drive your performance. It also makes you less susceptible to something called sequence of return risk, which we'll talk about next segment. Yeah, you know, when you think of tax planning, I liked what you said in the beginning. Really, there's this whole continuum, right, of how in depth we want to get with tax planning. Majority of advisors are surely not doing none of that. You know, the the, the really important, they won't touch it and they'll claim that they, you know, it's liability, all these other things, but even a simple, I'm sitting here thinking even a simple thing, most advisors aren't thinking about. So most people are listening, own a lot of mutual funds, right? But people don't realize that mutual funds in a taxable account is not tax efficient. People don't realize you own a mutual fund, that mutual fund actually could go down in value and you're still triggered a capital gains tax. Well, right now, if you're buying a mutual fund, Paul, you're inheriting about 25% in capital gains. That's, that, that's you're it's stuck incredible. with that. It's yours. People don't understand that. They think, well, if I don't sell the mutual fund, I can't have a capital gain. So if your advisor is selling you mutual funds in a taxable account right now, Run. you have an issue. You have a taxable issue. And that's a simple... That, That's simple. That's simple, right? That's That's simple. So that's that's bare bones basic. Right. And that's what you're going to, I mean, any competent today, any competent advisor isn't doing that. Honestly, we hear it in our class all the time. People saying, yeah, but I have this. I'm like, well, first of all, I don't know, want to know what you have. We're teaching a class, Mm -hmm. but I hear you, but that's the basics. Yep. That's why we spend seven hours in the class to show you how to run the iterations, show you how to even calculate what percentage of your social security is taxable. If you have a basic understanding, then you have a better ability to know if someone's BSing you. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need is the BS filter when you're choosing the advisor because these are very good salespeople. They're highly skilled. Can can I just say one thing I don't want to miss here? Tax planning has always been important, but I would argue today Tax planning is extreme. And the reason being is when you look at tax rates today, where they're going to be in the future, given all the unfunded liabilities we have, the trillions of dollars of debt, if tax planning was not important before, it is hugely important now because taxes are going up in the future. We say taxes are on sale. That's what they're on sale. So if you don't start doing tax planning today, 
We know you're going to be paying more taxes in the future. So, Paul, people don't even realize. No one's taught them. One of the things we teach in the class is to show you how much taxable income you're going to be forced to take out when you're 75 years old. People don't realize you project forward what your 401ks and IRAs are going to be worth. And then at 80 years old, you've got to take 6% out of that account every year. When you're 75, 80 years old, you're going to be taking so much more money than you even want. (laughs) For many of you who have saved in your 401ks that are all taxable, that's avoidable if we deal with it now and find a more efficient path. Whether it's through Roth conversions, QCDs, charitable strategies, when I should take my Social Security, should I take my lump sum versus pension, which I know we're going to talk about today. How you take your money from which accounts at what age is what's going to drive performance in retirement, not the average return of your investments. And when you leave our seven-hour courses, you'll know that. You'll understand that. Because I'm pretty sure none of you believe us right now. You think the investments you're going to choose is going to decide how successful your retirement is. And that isn't the case. You've been saving for 40 years. You've won the race. Now you got to spend down that money. And you got to find the most efficient way to do that. And to understand how to find that help or even understand how to do it, you need to spend seven hours in a course that we teach at all the major universities. And if COVID's an issue for you, we'll stream it. We'll teach it live and you're stream, while you're streaming it at home and you can watch it while we're in the universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation charity. To register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Glad to be alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. I want to make sure that you're up to date on everything the foundation is doing to help you with your retirement planning. An easy way to stay up to date is to follow them on Facebook. So search for Retirement Education Foundation so that you can be in the know. And we also want to make sure you have the website to get registered for the courses that the foundation sponsors throughout the year. You can find a location and a date that works well for you. And remember, this is a real investment into your future. So we're not talking about a short one or two hour course. We're talking about seven or eight hours, either one or two day option. You can learn more and get registered at retirementplanningedu.org. $29 for our listeners to attend. That's a donation that goes to charity. You can call as well if you'd like to register, 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul have been helping us understand what we need to be thinking about when we hire a financial advisor for our retirement planning. There's a lot that goes into this. And, you know, one of the things is understanding that the advisor has some expertise in how to take advantage of your retirement accounts, right? Because this is not super straightforward, correct? If someone's saying, hey, just dip into your accounts and take it out, you could be setting yourselves up for failure. How so, Kirk and Paul? Well, there is a little known risk, although it is the number one risk for retirees that academia has been screaming for years about. It's called sequence of return risk. And candidly, the markets have never been set up greater for this risk to occur over the next five years or so. And a simple number in the simple way to think about this is if we have a market event, it doesn't have to be a big market event, just a market event within the first five years of your retirement or the first five years before your retirement, the chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. You need to appreciate an average rate of return when you are just deferring your money versus an average rate of return when you're pulling money out of the accounts to live on is not the same thing and will not end up the same way. It will end up poorly for you. If you pull money from investments that are down in value, you are going to have a really bad outcome. Go to our website. We have a sequence of return calculator that you can play around with and put different returns over a seven or 10 year period. And you'll see when you outlive your money where you can have good average rates of return of five, seven, 
and only take four or five percent withdrawals, and you will outlive your money if you lose early. Paul, right, it's right. dangerous. And here's where the risk is when you have an advisor who isn't truly planning, when all your money is sitting in the stock market, and maybe you have some bond funds, so you think that's going to actually reduce the risk that Kirk talked about. But at the end, we, we could talk about that. But at the end of the day, this is the challenge when all your money is invested in the market because the market's at an all time high. And we know over the next five years, the chances of some, what you call market event or a correction, is pretty high. And if it just happens that you retire right before that, right? Or right after. Or right after that. The number is, what was that number you threw out? 75% chance of outliving your money. Right. Paul, here's why. 75%. I, no, I hear. I, I know the number. I hope they hear the number. And here's the thing. They always say, well, I have time. I just will wait. No. No, your time is gone. When you were young, you had time. Even in 2008 or during COVID, you had time because you weren't retired. You weren't pulling money out of it. So it came back. You're right. It did. It won't this time. Well, it's not, it's it not even, can't. It's not even, it's, You'll have fewer shares to come back. Exactly. It's not that. It, of course, the market's going to come back. Your, your account but won't. But your account won't. That's the point. When you, If you've retired, you need money to live on. Here's the other thing, Paul. When you're 72 years old, you no whether choice. you want to take money out or not, you have no choice. They are going to force it on you. And this is another really red alert, raise flags, I'm with the wrong advisor, situation if no one has projected forward for you what your r and d's are going to look like required minimum distributions are going to look like in your 70s so that there's a plan to withdraw from accounts that are not exposed to the market volatility then you need to run think about this i see people all the time paul between their pensions their 401ks iras and social security when they're in their mid 70s They'll come to us in their mid-60s and say, I'm going to live on 4 or 5%. That's what my advisor told me. And call it, let's say it's 100 grand. And then I show them, when we look at how much you're going to be forced to take out and live on, in your mid-70s, it's 200 grand. So you're going to live on 100 grand when you're healthiest, most active, and with the greatest risks of being forced to pull 200 grand out of a market that is going to have short-term market events that are going to occur. Right. And you can't even stop taking money if you wanted to stop right. taking money. You know, you, you mentioned. Have no clue. I'm sorry. You guys, I'm sorry. Baby boomers, I know you're sitting on a million, three million, five million. You think you're really smart because you've saved and invested and made all this money. You have no clue the traps that are going to happen in retirement. So, Neither do your advisors because that's not what they do. Sorry, Paul. No, no. So but I, 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 I want really I, so I I to make sure people are understanding this because I think. The risk we're running into right now is all of these people who are listening have been told by their advisor that as they get closer to retirement, they're just going to reallocate their investments to more bond funds. So I guarantee you most people are listening are thinking, I'm not going to have this problem because if the market corrects, I'll just start taking money from my bond funds. Why is that a fallacy? Well, Paul, the long-term treasury bonds year to date is down about 10% right now. Right. right now, it was 16% about a month and a half ago. So don't tell me, the next 10 years, bonds are going to get crushed. When interest rates rise, the bonds you own go down in value. That is a fallacy, an old playbook that advisors, one size fits all, cookie cutter playbooks that advisors are still using. As you get older, you put more money in bonds. That's crazy. Bonds and stocks are so correlated right now. We'll put it, we talk about in the class, we run the charts where over the last five years, stocks and bonds are over 90% correlated, meaning when the stocks crashed, your bonds crashed. Especially bond funds. Bond funds are going to get hammered. Right. I mean, look, it's no secret. The experts are telling you, go look at Citi, J.P. Morgan, Barclay, Goldman Sachs. Look at a 60 40 allocation. They're telling you it's only going to perform at 3% over the next 10 years. That's their forecast. That's because bonds are going to lose money over the next 10 years. There's going to be volatility. This is why you have to come to a seven hour course. So you know what to be looking for in the right advisor and building the correct retirement plan. Seven hour course at all the major universities. We've been doing this for 10 years now. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. And you can attend by going to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981.
Much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Are you registered yet for the Retirement Education Foundation's courses? If you haven't gotten registered, I want to encourage you to do that. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we're glad you're spending part of your day with us here on the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. It has been a fantastic conversation today. Kirk and Paul, you've been giving us tips and strategies, ways that we can be smarter about who we hire to help us get to and through retirement. And at the end of the day, it really comes down to working with someone who's going to be able to construct for you that plan, that solid plan, right? It is, Megan. So we've been teaching our courses that we keep asking you and suggesting you register for, those seven-hour courses. We've been teaching those for over 10 years now at most of the major universities, I should say. And I think the, I don't think, I know, we collect all the data. It's the reason why we know the average attendees, investable assets, what they tend to be and their education level. And, you know, look, this course is not for the average person who's going to retire with $200,000 saved for retirement. It's not for you. This course is for people that have some resources that need help on how to choose an advisor and how to construct a comprehensive, holistic retirement plan. So over the 10 years, the favorite part of the class, Paul, always is the section when we go through what a real retirement plan looks like, right? The part when we walk them through for 30 years, income coming from all the different accounts that have been constructed for a a person. And there, there can be a lot of different accounts because you need to have accounts that you can pivot to when we have short-term market volatility so that you don't have to spend less or change your lifestyle. And if you can pivot to the right accounts during those short-term market volatilities, there isn't that 75% chance of outliving your money. In fact, you can set it up so there's no chance of outliving your money. But being able to construct that plan to know when to take income from which count at what age, this will reduce and minimize taxes not by tens of thousands usually, it's hundreds of thousands, understanding how to bracket manage and all the variables that cause taxable events for a 30-year plan. This is the favorite part of the class. People get to see the entire 30 years of tax planning, the entire 30, 40 years of income planning, the whole plan summarized account by account. So when you get older and the spreadsheets are difficult to read, You can read a summary of exactly what you're doing when you're doing, when you're Roth converting, when you're charitably giving. What are you doing, when you're doing, and how you're doing it? How do you leave money to your, whether it's your children, right? Or Or your surviving spouse. spouse, right? How do you protect that surviving spouse who really knows nothing, right, potentially, you know, about your finances? All of these things are hugely important, right? And I think it's important and helpful to clarify not only what a plan is, But what isn't a plan? And because every time, every time I sit with somebody and I ask them, do they have a retirement plan? Everybody says yes. And when I say, okay, show me what you have, everybody shows me one of two things. A brokerage statement with a bunch of investments or this beautiful, and it is beautiful, color-coded, 60-page report based on a Monte Carlo, right? A Monte Carlo with a dial at the top. A, a, of a probability, yes. right? A probability of, of succeeding. With a 4% a spreadsheet right, 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 for 30 right. years. That is not a plan, right? That is not what we're talking about. If that's what you have. That's not a plan. That's not a plan. You got to come to the class. You'll see exactly what a plan is. Paul, the one that's really frequently being asked right now is that lump sum versus pension discussion. And guys and gals, Go to our website because we've just put up a a webinar on this. You guys have some serious decisions. If you're close to retirement within three years, you need to think about doing it right now because starting December 1st, especially in the automotive industry, some of you it'll be January 1st, depending on who you work for, your lump sum values are going down. They're going down just like they've gone up 20, 25% the last three years. They're going to go down just as quickly. And we're not going to get into why. We do in the class. We explain the math and the variables that are causing it to go down. But we know for sure, as of today, it's going down between 4 and 8%. 
you got a million dollars, it's going down between forty and eighty thousand dollars. If you were planning to retire in the next year or two, you may consider retiring early to get that money. Right. And so knowing that with, with also the risk that your four hundred one k's, which are, are right now at an all time high, yes. may also be down when you retire too. Uh, yeah, but Paul, in two years, if the markets are bad, my lump sum goes down, four hundred one k goes down. I'll just keep working when I'm right. sixty three years old for right. an automotive industry that finds a way to remove people over the age of sixty every chance they got right you don't get to always choose when you retire so the conditions to retire are perfect right now they are as good as they've ever been Mm -hmm. if you have a lump sum and your 401k is an all-time high if that windows in the next three years folks you need to really come to this class to think about whether you want to take the chances of continuing to work because it could look a lot worse working. You know one thing we didn't talk about, and we don't have time, but yeah. why do you – In our next the, show. All the credentials, right? All, I yeah. mean, everybody has a bunch of letters behind their names. <laughs> it's sort of important to know how do you sort through that, right? How do you really know who you're sitting with? We get into that in the class too, right? We don't have the time to do that now. That's the thing. They, the, our, Paul, our industry creates perceptions that isn't always reality. I love the firms out there with like 10 CFPs, so they must be doing planning. No, they're an asset manager. They do asset allocation. They do no planning. Knowing what the initials mean, but then also being able to translate whether whether they're using and utilizing those initials is what's being taught in the class. How do you filter through the BS? That's the purpose. So one last try today. Please register for one of our seven-hour courses that we have been doing for over 10 years now at most of the major universities. At University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi and Troy campus, Oakland University, and we're streaming it live so you can stay at home if COVID's a concern right now. We understand. So if you'd like to register, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800 240 89 Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.